Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the Hasselblad X2D. Now this is a camera system I have been a big fan of from the very beginning with the X1D, the X1D Mark II, and of course the X2D, and even the 907X, which to me is probably one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful modern cameras on the market to date. Now in terms of more of an SLR feeling camera, I gotta hand it to Hasselblad again. They have taken that trophy as well. To me at least personally, these are the most beautiful cameras. A close runner up is the Leica SL2, SL2S lineup. And then right after that, I would give it to the Nikon Z9 in terms of that kind of body design. But this X2D is just breathtakingly gorgeous. Craftsmanship, the ergonomics, the way that it feels in your hand, the way that it's built and designed. It is a camera that you need to pick up if you've never picked one up in your life. Just do it. You may not be able to afford it right now. That's okay. Just pick it up to understand how beautiful this camera is. And I'm very fortunate to actually review these kind of cameras on this channel. And big thanks to Clust Distribution here in Singapore, who are the providers for Hasselblad here. Uh, they've been very kind enough to allow me to test out the X2D. And what we're going to be doing with this camera is very unique. We're actually going to be doing a multi-part series, probably two or three videos covering the X2D. Reason being, I have with me the X2D and the 3575 XCD lens. That's the only combo that I have currently. Now I did get a chance to try the 38 millimeter, the, one of the new lenses from Hasselblad from a friend of mine, Matt Sturgis, uh, about a few months back when he first got the X2D and he passed me the camera and the lens for a few days. And you know, it was one of those situations where you don't wanna take a camera really out when it's somebody else's property, just in case something happens to it. It's very expensive to replace. So I really babied it, but I did get some photos out of that and I will be sharing that with you in another video. But I'm gonna to talk to you primarily about the 3575 on this X2D that I have with me right here. And of course, comparing it to the GFX 100S, a camera that I'm very, very familiar with. I mean, that's a camera system that I've been shooting well over a year plus. So you're gonna get a lot of those comparisons throughout this video and then the subsequent videos we'll be testing out the new lenses and then we will go out and we'll compare it against other camera systems out there and we're gonna really push it through its paces. So if you are in the market for this camera, by the time you're done with all seeing all these videos, you're gonna know if this is gonna be the right camera for you. So let's get down to talking about the X2D. Now, this is a camera, while priced premium over the GFX 100S, offers things that the GFX 100S doesn't offer currently at this time a one terabyte SSD drive inside of it. One terabyte, which is amazingly fast. There's no buffering playing back any image on this camera. It is beautiful to experience. Then we've got a CF Express Type B card slot, which again is like having a mini hard drive in your camera system. Next, we have a 5.76 million dot EVF, which is breathtakingly beautiful. This EVF desperately needed an upgrade from the X1D and X1D Mark II, and now in the X2D, having a 5.76 million dot high refresh rate, it is gorgeous to look at. 2.36 million dot rear display, which does tilt now, which is great. And the way they've done it is so, so refined. And the display is so thin that when it folds to the back of the camera, there's no large hump or bump or anything like that. It just looks seamless. The designers of the X2D tried to maintain the svelte body, the design, the aesthetics of the X1D and X1D2 because they knew they were onto something with that. And they packaged even more into this camera system, a 100 megapixel medium format sensor. It is the same sensor that is in the GFX 100 and 100S, but it also has IBIS in it. Five axis, seven stop image stabilization, which is friggin' amazing. The fact that you can go one over 10, one over 15, one over five, if you're really steady and get sharp shots is awesome. Now, there is no video to this camera system. So if you're looking for a full-fledged camera system that is going to give you video and medium format, just stop here. That is going to be the GFX 100S or 100. But for a lot of you out there that are looking into medium format, you're probably not looking at it for video, even though to give Fujifilm some credit here, the video quality on the GFX 100S is beautiful to look at. And I've actually shot some of my earlier videos here on this channel with that camera and it's gorgeous. But a lot of you are probably using this more for photography and that's where this camera is really going to shine. Now we've got Hasselblad's Color Science, which to me is some of the best in the industry bar none. I, I just love the colors coming out of this camera system. The skin tones are gorgeous, reds are gorgeous. The way that the just scenes come alive. We've got to talk about the ergonomics. You know. People say, well, it, the camera's not important. You just want a camera that performs well, right? You want a camera that feels good in your hands because a camera that feels good in your hands is a camera that you're going to want to use more often than not. And this camera feels fantastic in someone's hand. The way that the grip feels when you wrap your fingers around it, 
Maybe you have larger hands, smaller hands. It does not matter. It feels so, so good. The texture around it is great. It's not overly rough. It's just enough. You've got a nice area where your thumb can rest in the back of this right here where it doesn't press any buttons. There's a wheel there, but it doesn't get in the way. This is so well designed, it blows my mind. It really does that Hasselblad has been, been able to add more features into this camera system, but actually maintain the design aesthetics that I loved from the previous two versions. Now, in terms of battery life, I mean, it's good. It's decent. Is it going to win any awards out there? Probably not. Okay, it is the same battery that is from the X1D and X1D2. But for me, I can get through a few hours of shooting with no issues with it. After that, it will definitely get close to being, you know, I'll have to replace it. And this is something obviously would be great to have better battery life, but again, you can get other batteries from this. They're not that cheap, but they're not that expensive as well. So it's kind of in between. But I will tell you one thing that I did appreciate on this camera system that I did feel on the X1D and X1D2 is the heat. You know, when I used those both of those cameras previously, I mean, the camera would get really warm to the touch after using it for quite some time and having the power onto it, but I didn't feel it this time with the X2D as much. It was a little bit of warm, but nothing even close to what I felt on the previous camera. So they have improved it. Power consumption is better on this as well. I mean, I've taken it out, I've shot with it, and it's great. And I think using an internal SSD drive does help in terms of that. I may be wrong. I'm not an engineer, but I do feel having that inside has reduced the, the need for extra power that you would have to use with an external card. Again, someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong with that, but that's how I feel. Now, in terms of the SSD drive, I'm gonna wax lyrical about this because no other camera company outside of Leica with 64 gigabytes of internal storage in the M11 is doing something like this, one terabyte. If you were to buy a one terabyte SSD drive that's fast read and write, you're gonna spend a lot of money, but to have it inside of a camera, which means I have not even put a CF Express Type B card in this camera since I've got it. I haven't touched one, Not, don't even need to. I can barely fill this thing up as it is with one terabyte. And I've shot a lot with it. I can't tell you how valuable this is. You know what this means? It reduces the risk of card failure. There is no buffering issues. It's very easy to sync up this camera, USB-C to in your Mac or PC and take the images off. It's so well executed. Why aren't more camera manufacturers doing this? I have no idea. And yeah, you could look say, well, the price of this camera is $8,199 US dollars. You know, that's more expensive than the GFX 100S. But I would say, wait a second, a one terabyte SSD drive inside this camera plus the Express Type-B slot, that's an extra value. That's a value that you can't compare to any other camera system out there. Now, I'm not, you know, I, I like this camera. There are some faults to it. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. But this is one of them that I highly agree with. And I think that more camera manufacturers should be doing this. And the menu system is the same as the previous versions. The UI is fantastic. It's awesome to use. No issues in that regard. One thing that I do like that other people have already mentioned is the uh, how, are, how you can use the diopter in the camera system to adjust. And that actually has these little uh, three lines of Victor, 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 and they're on different planes and you sort of have to focus to get them all as sharp as possible. And that's kind of how you set the diopter. It's all electronically fixed inside the camera system. So there's no physical wheel to it, which is good. I kind of prefer a wheel because if you do hand off the camera to somebody else and you want to do a quick adjustment, you can't, you got to go into the menu system and it takes a couple minutes to do it versus having a wheel and just quickly adjusting. So it is cool, but having something physical on the EVF would have been better in my personal opinion. What else about this camera? Image quality. Talked about color science. How's the image quality? If you've never shot with a 100 megapixel medium format camera, the GFX 100 or 100S, you will be spoiled by the first image you see. The detail, the resolution, the, the dynamic range, the 16-bit color files, it's just, it's on a different level. If you shot phase one, that's probably the only camera system and maybe the H100, you know, the, uh, the older Hasselblad 100 megapixel camera system that's a larger sensor overall. These are the only camera systems that are gonna beat this in terms of image quality. I mean, these 100 megapixel sensors are friggin' mind blowing. But when you edit portraits, you're gonna spend some time editing any flaw because you're gonna see every little flaw in somebody's face, but the image quality, the tonality, the dynamic range, the depth in your image blows away anything you're gonna see out of full frame. Sorry guys, we can have that cut discussion on another day, but full frame ain't gonna compare to this thing. So how's the ISO performance in this camera? Is it better than the X1D and X1D Mark II? And the answer is yes, it is. Even though it's a 100 megapixel sensor versus 50, 
this is better. And I got some very usable images, even around 6400 ISO. Now, for some people, they may say that's way too high. And some people touted, I believe Steve Huff touted, it was like 25,000 ISO on the X1D and X1D2 or whatever the case may be. Look, you can get good images with higher ISO. If you're going to be shooting in black and white, you're not going to see it as much. And then again, we have software like Topaz Denoise or some other noise reduction software that will clean up a lot of your images. And I'm not paid or sponsored by them. I bought it myself, but I would highly recommend you trying that out if you're worried about noise because it cleans up a lot of images and it will save you a lot of time. So no issues with that at all. Now let's talk autofocusing. This now has phase detect autofocusing inside of this. Everybody's been wanting this. The X1D, X1D2 had contrast base and it was, it was slow. And sometimes it would hunt to find the subject. Look, media format's not supposed to be fast, but that was really, really slow. And I think Fujifilm having a much better autofocusing system, even in the contrast-based versions of the 50S, 50R, they did best Hasselblad in that way. This is part of the pros and cons of this camera system. Now, I did try it briefly on the 38 millimeter lens that I borrowed, but on this 3575, which has been the primary lens that I have on this camera system for the past few weeks, it does revert back to contrast base. It's not as slow as the X1D2 or X1D, but it is slow lower than using the newer lenses from Hasselblad. And it's not continuous autofocus, by the way, it's single autofocus. So there will be a little bit of hunting coming into play. So if you have some older XCD lenses, this is something you will face. Is it a deal breaker? No. Most of the time, as I mentioned, you're not gonna be shooting fast with this camera system. So if you have time to you know, set up your shot, get everything going, you're gonna be fine with it. And most times than not, it does nail focus right away. But again, it is not as fast as the GFX 100 as of right now. Will Hasselblad update the firmware on this? I'm sure they will. You know, they're backlogged on getting out the newer lenses out to market from what I understand. So not a lot of people have them. The 90 is not even available yet. I heard it's been delayed. So I think by the time we get all three of these new lenses out to market, plus probably even more, I'm guessing, we're gonna see enhancements to this and hopefully they do bring out continuous autofocus because I know it can do it. it, just doesn't have it in yet. But yeah, it's one of those things where if you do use older lenses, you will see that it is a little bit slower than the newer one. One thing that I noticed right off the bat is the sensor on the EVF is a little bit hit and miss. Case in point, what I mean is, is if I bring the camera up to my eye like this, right? On most camera systems, it automatically, as soon as I'm close, it's going right to the EVF and the EVF turns on. There's a moment of black where nothing is on and then it kicks on. And I've had a few times where I wanted to capture a moment and I missed the moment because the EVF was off and the display was, the rear display was on, but I'm already up here like this. And I looked in the settings to see if there are some settings for the EVF and there are, and I did play with both of the settings, but nothing changed. Hopefully this is something they can fix in a future firmware update because this gets to be a little bit frustrating. That's one. Another thing is that there is no joystick or touch wheel or physical touch wheel to adjust your autofocusing point. Unlike other camera systems where you have eye detect and you can have zone and field and all those kind of things, you don't have that in this. It's just one point you move it around. Using the display can be a little bit cumbersome. Case in point, I mean, you're always having to hold the camera like this. You know, it's not as intuitive if you were just to have like a, a physical joystick to move around. And I did find that if I ever handed the camera off to somebody else and I was trying to say, okay, can you move the focus point to, to on me or onto this? They had a hard time understanding it because they weren't used to grabbing the camera and using the screen to touch and move things around. I mean, it's something you do grow into, but it's not as intuitive as the rest of the camera is. So I feel like that's something that maybe in a future version of the X series cameras, obviously they'll come out with other ones in the future, that they could possibly put some sort of physical button or joystick there. I think it's time. Outside of that though, first impressions, I think the camera is beautiful. I think it's great. I have really enjoyed using it. I can't wait to test the newer lenses out with this to see how the autofocus improves. And of course, any firmware updates that come along with this, I will also update you guys as well. But this is kind of an overview. It's a little bit of a longer video than I've done, but I think that this camera system deserves it, especially for people out there that are in the marketplace for this. And again, this will be a series of videos on the X2D, so do subscribe to the channel for more of those videos. Thanks again to Class Distribution for being supportive of me and this channel and allowing me to test drive the X2D. And I will chat to you guys very soon. Take care.